Okay, so oftentimes um, when you want to show a client a work in progress or a supervisor work in progress or maybe something that's going to be close to finished, you often need to show a turntable. Um, in this case, I've just got the one of the demo projects in ZBrush called Earthquake. And so uh, if all your mesh is high res um, and it's painted, um, this is simple enough. We would simply take the character. You want to hit F to frame the character. Uh, in this case, I've got this subtool. If you were on the teeth or something and hit F, it might zoom into the teeth, but hitting F a second time should frame all the subtools. Generally speaking, you want to see every subtool. Um, you also want to make sure perspective is on as well. We often want to see the character in a, in a turntable in perspective because that's going to be close to what, how we see it in, uh, in rendering with cameras and things like that in a production. Uh, the next thing I want to check, so F helps center the character. And let me just click on the main subtool. And then you just want to kind of rotate around. Oftentimes I find I do want to zoom out a little bit just so I give a bit of a buffer space to the render. Um, and next we simply want to go to um, the movie window. So in here you have to click on movie. And as we zoom down, I'll kind of go slowly through these. Right now, if you capture the window, it's going to capture everything in ZBrush. So not just the document space, but all the tools all around it. So that's often distracting, and we don't want to see that. We just want the document window. Next up, we want to make sure this is a large movie. So it's the maximum, oops, it's the maximum uh, scale it should be. Under Modifiers, um, I've noticed in previous versions, I haven't checked this version yet, but if you record at 30 frames a second, play back at 30 frames a second. So I'm going to hit 30, hit enter, 30, enter. I want to skip menus. I also want to turn off, for some reason, they allow a cursor size in Zebra. So it actually turns your mouse arrow into a little yellow dot. I want to set that to zero. And I want this thing to spin for 10 seconds. Usually for me, I like a nice single turn over 10 seconds that's slow, steady, and easy to read. And it also helps for editing, so if you ever want to speed it up, it speeds up very well, and you usually don't need to go slower than this. So 30 frames a second, 300 frames, um, that's what I'm requiring for my current assignment. But if you're working in film, you may have to do it at 24 frames a second, and then you do 240 frames for a full turn. So that sort of covers that aspect. Uh, next up, on the timeline, sorry, let me go back here. The timeline uh, should be okay. There are overlays that actually happen automatically in ZBrush. There's an overlay image of the uh, the logo, uh, and there's a title image. So um, sometimes you may be required to do this, but this can actually um, distract, I find, from from the viewing experience. So you don't see the full turntable. You see the logo fade in, fade out. So usually for the title image, I turn that off. If you leave the, um, so this is in the lower, uh, I believe, right position at the uh, sort of bottom corner. So it'll put the ZBrush logo in the bottom corner. You could put your own custom logo there if you wanted to. You can put something else there if you wanted to. But um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is. Let me zoom back out so you can see everything. And then I'll simply hit turntable. So it's going to record a nice, slow, steady turn. It's basically rendering each frame, capturing it. Um, and it saves it to a kind of uh, uh, movie format native to ZBrush called a ZMV, a ZBrush movie video, I think, it, I guess it stands for. Um, so you can play within ZBrush, but you can't really play it anywhere else. So it's not the most convenient format. So I usually have to go through a final step to export my turntable. Um, so I'm going to just show you that quickly. So I'm going to go back into movie. And if you just sim sim simply hit play movie, it's basically stored in this cache and it's sort of sitting in a floating window on top. And again, you can see this logo in the bottom right corner, right? The ZBrush logo. Um, so let's say we go to uh, back to preference, sorry, back to movie, and you want to export. You want to turn on the H option. So that's H for high quality. So it's going to give you a nice high quality uh, MPEG video, I believe. And then you simply hit export. So it'll save out. So you just save it to wherever your location is that you're working from. Now, you shouldn't save to the desktop like I'm doing, but this is just a demo. So I always have a separate data drive that's backed up. It's very important. And I'm just going to open up a new uh, Explorer window here and go to my desktop and play back that movie. So it should play back just fine. It's, you know, 16 and a half megs. So that's great. Um, 
I've also set up in uh, for my own preferences. So sometimes when you want to do low poly turntables, so oftentimes in ZBrush you want to do a high poly turntable for texture display, but you may need to show a low poly turntable for the um, character mesh, the topology, especially if you're working in games or trying to develop some uh, preview mesh for feature film and TV. Um, what you can do is simply go down in your subtool palette. Let me just zoom in for you guys. So in the subtool palette, you can set all your subtools to their lowest subdivision. And if you take a look, they now all drop to the very, very lowest subdivision that they uh, belong on. And if we hit Shift F, you'll see the wireframe on the character. Now there is a problem with this. Uh, the problem is that you don't see the wireframe on every subtool, only the subtools that you wind up selecting. So if I select the clothing, you see the wireframe in the clothing, but nothing else. Um, ZBrush, you know, some people don't realize this, but ZBrush has a little built-in render system called Best Preview Render, or BPR, which is in the upper right corner here. So if I click that, it will render. This is a uh, ZBrush solution that was on their Ask ZBrush uh, YouTube uh, channel. So it'll take a second to kind of calculate out. Uh, there's a couple drawbacks to this. It gives you um, shadows, um, which may be distracting, but it does show you wireframe across all tools. I have another preferred solution to this. Um, and this is especially good for when you're showing a low res wireframe. What you want to do is go to Z plugin. So that's right here. Transpose master. Always a good idea, by the way, to clear all your masking on all subtools before you do this. It can bug out and kind of corrupt your file. Save a version of this file before you do this. And what it does, it's mainly meant to help you pose or repose the character, but what it does is it temporarily turns all your subtools to the lowest subdivision. And now you can quickly, you know, switch to materials for your preferred presentation render. So for me it's usually skin shade or flat. In this case I'll go skin shade four. And um, I can now make a new low res turntable of this basically. So I can see the wireframe across all tools because it's one subtool, it's showing the polyframe just just fine. If I wanted to show the polygroups as well, I can hit uh, the fill color, and if I wanted to do just the uh, polygroup only display, I could do just fill only as well. So, um, you know, this is really, really great. Now, the other thing is this this character has a poly count of, uh, technically it's actually not a poly count, but a vertex or a point count of 64, 63. Um, so, I have a, uh, a little Photoshop document that I made with a poly counter. Um, I could update this number, you know, just quickly type it in. So I think it was 64, 63, if I'm not mistaken. I could save that out. And so what you can do, just going, going back to that icon reference, if I go to movie, uh, by the way, I should mention this, this movie is still loaded in the cache. So if you, if ZBrush crashes or you restart uh, and you want to create a new movie, you can delete this if you want. It'll delete the kind of pre-recorded movie, so now you can make a new movie. So in the overlay image, what I can do is actually click on that icon. Sorry, let me go back to movie. Click on the overlay image. Now let me just zoom in. Click on the image, go to import. And where did I stick that thing? Let me find that. I believe it's in here, okay. Okay, so I'm just going to locate the file. There we go. So we've got the poly count. So this should keep my settings from the last time. Um, so you'll see the poly count there. I intentionally made the background black, the foreground white. So it should kind of show through as a nice kind of um, opacity basically. And I'll crank up the opacity on this to 100%. Now if I do a turntable, we won't see that uh, icon show up as a kind of watermark or stamp on the turntable until the rendering is done, we get to preview it. Um, so we'll let that sort of spin through. Um, and what you can do as well, so if you find that the file size is still a bit too heavy, let's say for emailing or something like that, you can always recompress the video file. So let's just uh, hit the play movie option. So there you see the poly count in the corner. Um, as I said, you can actually reload that image. So let me go to movie, delete this very quickly. And because it's a black and white image, black background, white foreground, I can also pretty much reload it as an alpha as well. So I'll just load it there. And then I'll go to turntable.
So I just paused uh, to record that. Let's just hit play on that. So there you go. Now you see the poly count showing up just fine. It's actually showing through the transparency. So it's a very simple way to, um, you know, kind of capture that information. Again, you could always have a company name, your freelance name, your your actual name, and any other information that you want. You know, the client, the client name, the client brief, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so again, to remember to export via here. Export always make sure H is on for highest quality. And then you can basically save that out and uh, I'll wait for this to render out. And again, I mentioned uh, you can recompress the file. So I often use uh, something like Adobe Media Encoder or Handbrake, which is a free video encoder. And it can easily get the file size down to you know one tenth, uh, maybe half as big um, if you're going with higher quality settings. And it makes it nice and compact with very little to no loss in quality. So. Um, this is really, really a great and useful tool, as I said, for present, uh, presenting your work to, to clients or to supervisors and things like that, or even just for your own demo reel.